everyone! My name is Sterling and I am the founder and artist behind Cactus Lady Creation. If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you are new here, on this channel I feature everything conscious crafting, so DIYs, upcycle crafts, nature crafts, and I'm also starting to do thrift flips, which is where I take an item that I find at a thrift store and I make it into an upcycle craft where I create something new from it. So in this video, I'll be taking some items that I found from my last video. If you didn't check it out, make sure you head to the last video to see all my favorite tips and tricks about how I found the items that I'm flipping today. And in this video, I'll be taking those items and making them into something really new and interesting. If you want to check out that video, you can see it in the card above or the description box below. And all right, let's go ahead and start with our first item. In the last video, I found these two glass candle holders that I really loved and wanted to give a boho look to. So I thought, what better way than to paint them some fun colors? For this project, I used a paintbrush, PBO Vitria glass paint, 50-50 vinegar water mixture, and a rag. I also wear gloves to protect my skin, but the great thing is that this paint is non-toxic, which you know, I like to keep things as non-toxic as possible. First, I wiped down the glass candle holders with the vinegar water mixture to get them nice and clean before painting them. Then, I used the emerald glass paint to paint the first candle holder. First, I stirred the paint nice and well, and then just using a regular paintbrush, I went ahead and gave this first candle holder an even coat. I absolutely loved how vibrant yet translucent the color was. After painting, I set the first candle holder to the side and went ahead and started painting the second one black. I didn't like how transparent the black paint looked, so I decided to mix a bit of the black paint with the green emerald color to give it a darker, richer color. I liked the way that this looked a lot more. After allowing both candle holders to dry for 24 hours, I placed them in the oven and baked them at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for 40 minutes, as the instructions said. I placed them in the oven first and let the candle holders heat up and cool down in the oven, and this is how they turned out. I really liked how fast and simple this project was. Besides the drying portion, it took under an hour to complete. What do you think? Would you try this? Leave a comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts. This next project is this beautiful vintage lamp that I found that was a bit beat up and needed a bit of love. I loved the shape of the base and wanted to give it a bit of a modern boho twist. First, I took off the lampshade and cleaned the base with the vinegar water mixture to get all the inks and grime off of it. Then, using the Folk Art Non-Toxic Matte Black Chalk Paint, I painted the lamp hardware black and covered up all of the gold areas. You can also find all of the materials that I used in this video in the description box below. Then, I cut the fabric off of the lampshade frame and cleaned off the frame with the vinegar water mixture to get all of the grime off. There were a few places where the metal was broken, so I mended them using Fabri-Tac glue, which works miracles on everything, including metal. After drying, I painted the frame with the black chalk paint as well. Then I set the frame to the side to dry. Next, I used the Folk Art Chalk Paint in the color Milk Jug 
and mixed it with baking soda. It was 50% paint, 50% baking soda mix, and I stirred it very well. This really thickens the paint and will allow it to have that stone texture that we want for this lamp base. Next, I painted a layer of the paint on top of the lamp base and made sure that the paint strokes were nice and consistent and painted an even coat. The paint really does go on thick, so a little goes a long way. After letting the first coat dry, I blended a little bit of the black paint with the eggshell to get varying colors of gray, and using two thick bristled brushes, I applied the colors by dabbing them onto the lamp base. So you can see here, I'll dab on the darker gray and then blend it with different shades of lighter gray into the darker gray, but allowing the colors to remain a little bit speckled or mottled so that it has that nice stone textured look. I really just continued to layer it until I was able to get the look that I wanted. I found it helpful to use two different brushes at once as well and to dab with both of them to really get that natural speckled look or randomly dab at different places on the lamp base so that it really looks natural and isn't too overworked or blended. Occasionally I'd also go back in with the eggshell color and dab over the various grays as well to give it more of that speckled mottled look. I hope this is making sense. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment box below and I'll do my best to answer. Then I painted the base of the lamp black as well to match the hardware. I made sure to do this in the same consistent direction so that it has a nice smooth texture once it's dried. I wanted to macrame onto the cord as well, so I added some PVC electrical tape to the cord, which really is an extra step in preventing any fire hazards. While wrapping it around, it's important to stretch it a bit so that it can really protect the wiring. After the lamp base was dry, I rubbed a little bit of dry coffee on it, which gives the lamp base a nice aged look. I used coffee that was really cheap that I will never drink and only use for crafting. It also exfoliates your hands a little bit, which is an added bonus. I used a dry paintbrush to brush off the excess coffee, and here is the way that it looks. I love the way that this turned out so far. Next, I grabbed this gorgeous 4mm organic cotton cord from Modern Macrame, which I used to create the lampshade. I love Modern Macrame as they ethically source all of their cord and have the best products for fiber art. I have shared a link in the description box below which will give you $10 off of your first purchase with them if you go through that link. My lampshade has 8 different sections so I made 2 different alternating patterns on each section so I'll be sharing 2 different sections with you. For the first section, I cut 12 cords that were 92 inches long and mounted them to the top of the frame using a lark's head knot. For the pattern in this video, it'll be helpful to know the lark's head knot, square knot, and double half hitch knot. If you're an absolute beginner or want to brush up on how to complete the knots, feel free to check out my video in the card above which shows these knots in more detail. First, I went to the two middle cords which I will use to outline a diamond shape in this design. So I crossed the two middle cords over each other with the right over the left and I tied a double half hitch knot. Then I continued with creating a diagonal row of double half hitch knots with 11 of the cords.
Once I got to the edge, I mounted it to the edge of the lampshade using a lark's head knot. So I wrapped it around and pulled it to the front and then on top of the section and then wrapped it around again from the back over the top and then pulled it through the loop. Then I did the same thing on the other side using the middle cord I made 11 double half hitch knots diagonally across the row and once I got to the end of the row I mounted the cord to the frame using a lark's head knot. Next, I created several rows of alternating square knots to fill the diamond shape. So I started with one square knot at the top and the middle. Then in the second row, I worked two square knots. In the third row I did three, in the fourth I did four, five in the fifth, six in the sixth, and then once I got to the sixth row I also worked lark's head knots on each of the sides. Then I did another row of five alternating square knots then four, three, two, and one at the end to complete. To complete the diamond, I did another row of double half hitch knots using the outer cords. For the middle section in this design, I created three diamonds and used eight cords for each. First, I used the middle eight cords and continued with the double half hitch knot to create another smaller diamond and worked three double half hitch knots. Then I used this middle cord to work three more double half hitch knots on the other side of the smaller diamond. Using the middle six cords, I created a square knot Then I continued with the double half hitch knots to complete the diamond. Using the same pattern, I created another diamond to the left of the middle one.
Once I got to the left edge of the diamond, I anchored it to the frame using a lark's head knot. Then I created three more double half hitch knots on the other side of the diamond. I wanted to add some fringe to the middle of this diamond, so I cut four cords that were eight inches long each. To add fringe to the diamond, I folded them in half and then placed the cords over the top of the middle six diamond cords and pulled the ends of the fringe through the middle and underneath the middle section of the fringe. To secure the fringe into the diamond, I continued with the double half hitch knots on both sides of the diamond and this will secure the fringe in place. Using the same pattern, I created the diamond on the right side of this design. Using a fine tooth comb, I combed out the fibers of the fringe to make them look really nice and straight, and then I used scissors to trim it. About three inches below the diamonds, I created a row of square knots. Then I anchored each side to the frame using a lark's head knot. Next, I worked a row of alternating square knots, so I skipped the first two and last two cords to do this. I continued with this pattern working one row of square knots, anchoring both sides to the frame using a lark's head knot, and then working a row of alternating square knots until I got all the way down to the bottom of the frame. I worked eight alternating square knot rows total. In order to anchor the cords to the bottom of the frame, I placed all of the cords behind the frame and then worked a row of double half hitch knots. To do this, I worked from left to right. Starting with the first cord, I wrapped it around the frame and to the left, and then I wrapped it around again and then pulled it through the loop to tighten and secure the cord to the frame. I continue with all of the cords across the row in the same way, wrapping them around the frame the same way that I would a cord when working the double half hitch knot. If you start to run out of space as you do this, you can easily adjust all of the cords by pulling them over to the left as you work in order to make more space. Now that we've finished the design for the first panel, I'll show you the second one. The pattern for this design is a little simpler as well. For this one, I cut 10 cords at 112 inches long and 2 cords at 184 inches long, and I used the longer cords on both of the ends of this design. Then working from left to right, I worked a row of square knots. Then I anchored both of the sides to the frame using two lark's head knots. Then I worked a row of alternating square knots, 
and then continued with the same pattern, one row of square knots, two arcs head knots of each end, and a row of alternating square knots for the entire panel. I worked two larks head knots on the ends in between each alternating row so that all of the frame sides would be covered with cord because I liked the way that this design looked. That's why the end cords are so much longer for this panel. But if you don't have sides of the frame like I do, feel free to make all of your cords the same length or bypass the part of anchoring them to the frame. Or if you have a side of the frame and don't want to anchor them to the sides, it's up to you. There's so many different options. To finish this panel, I went ahead and anchored all of the bottoms of the cords to the frame using the double half hitch knot. Now it's time to trim the ends and I love the look of this cord when it's combed out, so I went ahead and combed the fibers until I liked the way that the fringe looked. A nice trick to keep the fringe straight is to apply a little bit of heat or steam from a heat gun or steamer and that'll help straighten out the fringe. Next, I wanted to wrap the lamp cord in macrame with some 5mm cord from Modern Macrame to get that bulky, chunky look. So I taped off the ends so that they wouldn't unravel while working with the cord. For this, I measured two cords that were about 10 times the length of the lamp cord. Then I used the spiral knot to work the macrame cord around the lamp cord. The spiral knot is just a variation of the square knot, so instead of working both sides of the square knot, the left side and then the right side, you just want to work one side repeatedly in order to make the spiral knot. So I just continued working left facing square knots for this. Once I got to the end, I used a crochet hook to pull the ends of the macrame cord under four of the knots to tuck in the cords. You can also use a wooden needle or anything else that you may have on hand to do this. Once the ends were nice and tucked in, I just trimmed the ends off. Right when I finished the lamp cord, the vintage old lamp cord stopped working and a fuse in the cable blew. Luckily this is an easy fix, so don't let that faulty old lamp cord be the reason that you don't get that thrift store old lamp gem. This is an easy fix. These are the supplies that are helpful to have on hand for this project. I also placed links to where you can find all of the supplies for this project in the description box below. First, I took off the lamp harp. Then I loosened the screws at the bottom of the lamp. Most lamps have a felt bottom, but this one actually has a metal one, so I loosened it as much as I could at first and will loosen it more later. Then I used a slotted screwdriver to loosen the hardware and then twisted it to take it off the lamp. Then I unscrewed this part of the lamp socket. On some lamps you can also pull up the lamp socket to remove it and sometimes it'll have press written on the side if this is the case. After untwisting the top part, the bottom became really loose and then I just cut off the wires with sharp scissors to make them easier to remove. The middle of this lamp is just a straight tube going down the center which will make feeding the new wires through this lamp really easy. If your lamp is more complicated, I'll explain how to insert them as well. As you can see, these wires are nicely soldered already at the tip which is perfect and ensures that they will stay together and not fray.
First, I fed the wires through the screws in the base of the lamp. Next, using a little bit of electrical tape, I taped the ends of the wire together to make sure that feeding it through the lamp is nice and easy. If pulling the cord is harder for your lamp, then you can also tape this wire to the end of the old cord, which will make it easier to pull up the lamp, or you can also tape the wire to the end of a long metal wire, which will make it easier to pull through the lamp. It's also important to make sure that the electrical tape isn't too thick in order for it to be able to go up the lamp with no problems. Once the cord is through, I tightened the bottom of the base of the lamp. Then I went ahead and started reassembling the base of the lamp socket. It's also important to leave the paper in the socket to insulate the wire and prevent any electrical shock. Then I took the electrical tape off of the end of the wire and pulled the two wires apart very gently a few inches. Next, I tied an underwriter's knot, which is really important as it prevents any snagging of the wires if the lamp cord gets pulled. Then it's good to create two sailor hooks at the ends of the wires. Now unscrew the terminal screws at the bottom of the socket shell using the Phillips and place each of the sailor hooks on the screws in a clockwise direction. The most important thing to remember here is that the lamp wires are polarized. So the rib side is grounded, which will go on the silver screw, and the smooth side is ungrounded, or the hot side, which is the bronze screw. It's really important to ensure that the wires go on the right side to prevent electrical shock. So I tightened the screws and placed the socket into the base. Then I placed the paper into the socket cover and placed it on top of the socket. Then I pushed the socket cover on top of the socket and pushed it down into the base to secure it to the lamp. You may need to pull the cords down from the bottom of the lamp in order to adjust it. Next, I put the lamp part back on the lamp and an LED light bulb in and this is how the lamp turned out. I really enjoyed transforming this thrift store find and I hope you enjoyed this transformation too. Please let me know your thoughts or questions in the comment box below as I would love to know. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of future tutorials as it really helps this channel out and allows more people to join our conscious crafting community. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.